So yeah, basically, here's a map of the area. And what we're gonna do is we're somewhere in and around here. And I wanna come down and check out this trail. Trail 12, there's been a BFRO report out there, the one I, I was telling you about, where the hunter saw the Sasquatch look at him up in the, when he was up in his hunting stand. But basically, I wanna check this area out because there's gonna be a lot of resources there, a lot of ag, turkey, deer, hogs, elk. And basically, we're just gonna walk this trail and see what we can find and listen for any strange noises and basically try to find a spot for in the future to come back and investigate. But we have 30,000 acres here, 29,000, let's just say 29,000. And my conclusion is that they're gonna be somewhere around water. But the fact that they were up here shows that they can, they can be anywhere. And David's property is somewhere in that area. So there's all kinds of creeks and drainages that lead to certain areas. And I think they're seeking out certain farms and certain resources. Yeah. So if we can find something, I think it'll validate the story on trail 12, which is close to David's property. And it'll get us closer to further activity. But basically you see like I've kind of left some suckers just laying there and you got apples and we're getting ready to go down this trail so hopefully oh a bunch of peanut butter yeah but yeah leave it around there just like that where whatever's here you'll see it have its eye on it because if they're around like David said they're they're already checking us out oh yeah they already know we're here mm -hmm. they're just waiting till nighttime yep. to we already in. lit our signal fire yeah yeah exactly Patterns. Yep. They oh, like there patterns. you go. So yeah, but I have I've heard that too. Uh, that that some people have likened uh, Bigfoot or Sasquatch to aut autistic people because of their the how elevated their minds are. Mm -hmm. They said, I mean, they don't like it when you look at them in the eye. Yeah. They like to do little patterns and yep. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Pa thing. Yeah, patterns. That's why when you you did, that's kind of why I was sitting one mm. on a plate and leaving one empty. You know, never know. You know, mm. they, they, they you, you don't know unless you try. And I've never heard anybody doing that. So, you know, I might even try that again tonight. Leave one apple on one plate and another one sitting on the table just to see if they do anything with it. Because I know they're out here. <laughs> mm. This is this is. Uh, this is, if they're anywhere, they're here. No, yeah, yeah I agree. Makes you wonder though, what are they doing it for? Are they doing it to communicate? Or is maybe one down there smashing clams on a rock? I don't know, but every time you do it, the cows go nuts. I know, I just heard them. <laughs> I like that. Well, that's good because that lets us know other things are hearing us Yeah. when, when we do it. But yeah, I wanna go check out Trail 12. Yeah. And see what this BFRO report's all about, which I'm sure they're in there. There's so much forest, but. Oh, geez. I, I mean, look at this. <laughs> yeah. You no, know, if they're anywhere, they're here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Endless forest. Endless. But, yeah, if we could get out there and check that out, drive yeah. down that trail. I mean, my goal is to drive down the trail and hopefully see like a big X or some type of structure and then we can get out and look from there and good get me, the cameras man. and Hell yeah. see what we can find. Hopefully a good track or something. But my main goal is to take a picture of one. Yeah. Good video.
and I don't really care about well, convincing the world. I'm, I'm, I just like photography, wildlife photography. Oh yeah. I think that'd be the coolest thing. Yeah, it doesn't. To look it, at it I think that's got a, a lot of those when people put up what they call the blob squatches. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of those probably are real because the people, when you hear people talking about them a lot of times, they're so passionate about it. You know, picture doesn't always display yeah. what you're actually seeing with oh, your Oh yeah, eyes. absolutely. When they got a story behind it, then, you know, it don't matter what the picture look like, but to me, it's like if they just present the picture and there's no story, it's like, okay. But yeah. some people are so adamant about it, yeah. you know. Yeah. Only really they know. know. But, Only the person that took exactly, the photo knows. But then again, you know, hey, you, you get that picture, then you got that memory of that sighting forever. That'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Even if it doesn't mean a dang thing to anybody else. Right. We'll Trail back tools. over there tomorrow or, or at all, or should we even take this stuff over there? Or? I mean, we can take it down the trail if we want. Yeah. What if we get activity? Okay. Yeah. It's so let's let's that's hit this trail. I, that's why I grabbed that. Mm -hmm. So I am going to play some video footage of David and myself riding through the conservation area. I wanted to read this Bigfoot report that was on the BFRO website and it's close to David's property. The encounter took place on October 8th, 2016 during the fall. Now I find this next part to be rather odd because the location details, it states, please do not let this info out because of folks who want to harm these creatures. Now I am not reading anything that wasn't already posted here, but it seems like the guy didn't want to give away the location or maybe the BFRO put it up on accident. I'm not really sure, but I can agree with the guy's statement as far as people wanting to harm these creatures. I think that's a very bad idea and they should be respected. The story was investigated by a guy named Carter Bushart, I think that's his name, and you can read his info here at the bottom. Alright, let's read the story to give us a better idea of where Patrick and myself are going. In the meantime, keep your eyes peeled as David and I drive through the park because you never know what you will see. And it's hard for me to analyze every single clip fully, so if you guys see anything peek out from behind a tree, let me know in the comments below. Alright, here's the story from the guy who encountered the Bigfoot here in this conservation area. He writes, I have to apologize about not posting my sighting sooner, simply because most folks just laugh and look at you as a fruitcake or something. However, this makes my second sighting of a Bigfoot. My son and I were bow hunting in Reynolds County, Missouri, and I decided to hunt a pond where the deer were using it constantly. To make a long story short, I settled in a tree behind the pond where I could watch the hauler leading up to the pond and a log road running past the pond as well. So around 5 p.m. I noticed how quiet the woods became. The squirrels I had been watching disappeared. The birds became silent, so I started to become concerned of human activity. So I began to search the woods to see if someone was in the area when this large black figure appeared walking down the other side of the holler I had set up to watch. At first I thought it was a man, but as it kept walking I noticed how massive it was, and all of a sudden it stopped and took two steps backwards and turned and looked straight at me. It was then I realized this is not a man, but a Bigfoot. As this creature looked at me, I could clearly see its eyes and nose. I could see flesh around its eyes and cheeks, and also see hair covering its face as well. It stood there looking at me for I guess a good 15 or 20 seconds. Then it turned and walked down the ridge and disappeared into the woods. Needless to say, I was scared out of my mind and refused to climb down the tree, but it was getting dark and I knew I had to meet my son back out on the main road. Finally, I calmed my nerves and climbed down. I walked over to where I saw it, and look back to the tree I was in, and then it became clear that what I had seen could not have been a man, because he was eight foot tall. When I met up with my son, I asked him if he met or passed anybody or any vehicles on his way to pick me up. He said no, then I told him what I saw. 
You can also read at the bottom of the webpage where Carter meets up with the guy and he better describes the details. I just wanted to read the gentleman's encounter to give you guys a better idea of where Patrick and I will be. Yeah. That looks huh. cool. And you know what's weird? Go right behind it. There's another one. Yeah. Very cool. And that, and that does look like an A-frame structure. Yes, it does. It's pretty symmetrical. But like what I was saying is Can that, you see the other one right over there? Yeah. The only thing I was saying is that log right there. Yeah, I see how you it, say that's been kinda, cut. So it's but, hard to say if that log fell in there and snapped it like that. But Yeah, but the log's mainly It's underneath. That way. Yeah. Just so much forest out here. Oh I know. Nothing but. Yeah. So we're out here on trail 11. We're having a really hard time finding trail 12. But Patrick did a call and then I did a call right after that. And I heard what sounded like a wood knock. We were listening, but Patrick got a phone call. So I'm gonna go check it out. It's just gonna be hard to locate him with so much land around. Definitely the trick to a place like this would be for the Sasquatch to come to you. Find the infamous Trail 12. Is this it? No, this is Trail 11. Oh. I'm hearing some knocks, but it's hard to say if it's distant woodpeckers. Oh yeah? Yeah. But I mean, there's a ton of food plots down this trail. Oh yeah. No, this is so, a perfect spot. It is for them to get food, but I don't know if it's the best spot just because everything's kind of been cleared out here for the yeah. deer but we can continue or we can try to find trail 12. trails like these are definitely good spots to get paralleled by the sasquatch oh definitely that's probably why a lot of times you're not going to find a footprint on a trail like this because they generally i don't i mean this is my opinion i think they parallel us in the woods yeah we're, we we stay on the trails. They're made to be able to walk through the woods and still remain quiet. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can find this trail and at least get a start to finding yeah. a good research area. Yeah. Because I want to find something cool for me and you personally to go into that nobody else is going to know of. Yeah. And yeah, it'll be awesome. Because it might not be on Trail 12. It might be on the way there or something but exactly i think that's the closest lead we got to finding something good we're driving down the road and uh what is it what did you say this is about 30 40 foot off the road yeah. and we see this now how peculiar is it that this tree here is pushed over just perfectly for it's balanced right on this yeah, that is strange. And I don't know if this means anything. But then there's another... And it points along with the road. That's the way the road goes. I mean, if that was pointing towards something, it would be pointing towards uh, Trail 11. Yep, and this is Trail 12 is we're on. Way? Yeah, and we're on Trail 12. Yep. So basically, this is some type of marker that signifies travel directions and corridors and possible human activity because compared to all the other trails out here this one comes across all the the agriculture and um there's just all kinds of food plots out here so that just to me tells me all the deer and elk out here including mm -hmm. the hogs want to come out here for food so i think the sasquatch would want to be here as well and that kind of points out Towards danger, possibly. I don't know. I don't know man. It's really strange. Yeah. Basically, what I want to do is find some some structures with geometry to them. Yeah. That that is just obvious. You know, maybe a giant tree that's stuck in the ground, or. Yeah. I I think what you just found back there is pretty obvious. Yeah. Uh, that's not. That didn't look natural. Mm hmm And that. I mean, could it happen? Yeah, but. Would it happen? Not likely. Right. And on that BFR report, 
the one that I read, the guy mentioned he was in his tree stand and when the Sasquatch walked across the woods far away, he mm -hmm. could see it in the distance. It stopped and looked right at him. So to me, that tells that tells me that they know exactly where you're at. They oh, can yeah. sense you. I don't know if, you know, they can smell you. But I agree. To me, being a hunter, something's in front of him. He probably was hunting with the wind in his face. Yeah. You know, the wind was blowing in a direction going behind him, not going to the Bigfoot. So it's not their noses. I think they have a sixth sense. Yeah. Check this out. Some type of some type of vertebrae. Or something. Oh yeah. Laying right here in the middle of the trail. Yeah, it was. I noticed that when I was putting my backpack on. I was like, nope. I saw you bend down and pick something up, but I didn't. That's that kind of strange. Yeah. I'm keeping I that. What the heck that Should is? I keep it or? Yeah, it's a gift, I, right? I, I, that's kind of odd looking. You don't want to like decline a gift. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So I'm gonna keep it. Put it in the back of the, or yeah. yeah. I want to be able to examine it later. Yeah, because I'd, I'm curious. Now you got me curious of what that might be from. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully we don't get abducted later. That's kind of what I'm hoping. <laughs> so it's quiet out here. Patrick mentioned how quiet it was, and I mean, we stopped and we listened, and it hurt our ears. Yeah. Just trying to listen to the sounds and one other thing he pointed out was there is no birds out for how hot it is i mean just last week it was like in the teens yeah and now it's like 85 degrees yeah but there should be birds bouncing around you think everywhere. everything would be trying to get out yeah and there's nothing out here nothing and it's dead quiet it's freaking me out man. yeah it's a little it really is <laughs> a little weird but i mean the best thing we can do is walk down this trail see what we can find hopefully find some structures and like I said, like if a Sasquatch walked out, I got this thing, the Eberly Stuck. I think it's made for binoculars, but I like to put the little camcorder in there. Yeah, that's cool. And this thing gets amazing video. Really? Amazing. Yeah, I can zoom in really far away. Really? So, nice. something walked out, I got the GoPro, and I got this. Because I thought about it, I'm like, man, yeah, I got a camera out when I'm walking out in the woods, but... If something walked out like let's say 100 yards and i could see it with my actual eyes yep. if i use the gopro yep you're gonna see like this little black figure walking mm -hmm. far away and i don't even know if you'll be able to see that we're getting into the pines so the habitat's beginning to change we're going from like white oaks walnuts into into these thick pines and yeah getting thicker by the minute getting thicker by the minute So Miguel and I are out here and this place just has a way eerier feeling than where we just came from. It seems like the further we walk in, the eerier it feels, it's completely quiet. We were coming up the trail, he noticed a very odd tree leaning balanced perfectly on another one that kind of made it a day. Um, then we found at the crossroads a bone he found. A bone when he was putting on his backpack and it hadn't been sitting there it wasn't indented into the ground I mean, it was sitting right there at the crossroads and then we get down here and there's a tree directly across the road and then trying to get into the food plot there's another tree across the road so I don't know what we're walking into <laughs> in a puddle yeah they're gonna be croaking later. That's squatch food. I heard a knock. Did you hear that? No. That way. Oh, another one. Did you hear it? You heard it. I heard the second one. Oh. Did you hear another one? Yeah. You sound like a dog. You hear that thing? Yeah. The rock lights. Open this thing up. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, he was. 
He was rock clacking right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he goes. There he goes again. Is that what it is? I don't know. I don't know. We gotta go check that out. What a time for a freaking helicopter to come by. And in 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 that the way it goes though, we should be finally we're starting to get wood knocks. We hear a wood knock over here, we hear three wood knocks over here, then we hear something else, and then a freaking Well, been, it's been nonstop been, with the planes. Yeah, been dead quiet all afternoon. And as soon as we get action, a, a helicopter shows up. There. Call this the the Bobo call. Yeah. Traveled a long way. That scared me. <laughs> it was loud. It's like I'm scared. <laughs> I don't want to go further down this trail now. It's all fun and games till we have to run. Yeah, till, till, till something answers back. Yeah. <laughs> it is, and it's just over to the next hill. Looks like them trees been pushed over into an X, and then coming down this trail. Got three three logs blocking it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is like an old abandoned trail too. But oh, I stopped because I thought I heard, I heard a another knock. Another one right there. I thought I heard a knock and we stopped. Yeah, and that's why we act. stopped. Yeah. That, that's pulled that way, and then this tree's pushed over up into there. It could have happened naturally, but I'm not for sure. Yeah, but it is very strange. That is strange, especially since the road has those logs blocking it off. It's, a, yep. it's an old road. I don't know what they did out here, but it's no longer 
being used. But yeah, there's this Giant X, which we're not for sure if it is, but. Sure look like one. It does look like one. Man, there's some an interesting little twist right there. Yeah, too. yeah, I was, I was noticing that. And another one. Yeah. This place gives me an eerie feeling. Yeah, me too. Yeah, basically, the report says he was up in a tree stand and he could see this creature walk across. I don't know if it was the timber or a food plot, but yeah, it looked right up at him. All right, let's take a jar of peanut butter. I'm gonna try a few different approaches. This one, I'm just gonna set it near the camp with the lid off let the smell get out and then later I'll set some more out but with the lids on and stuff and that dump over there looks good you think here or here no oh, yeah that's a good one too oh where were you going I was talking about that one oh. Get we'll leave that right there with you. All right, so Patrick's getting the food ready. And I am going to get some apples. We already got some peanut butter out here. But there's a stump over here that's a little bit further away. And I feel like they'd be a little bit more comfortable coming up to this stump. Rather than this one. But we'll see. I'm going to get two apples. Maybe that'll get some type of response. We're going to cook some steaks. See what happens. hard to say especially if there's like a white one yeah it'd be really hard to see because everything's like white oaks out here I everything looks like white and gray you you you'd think white would be easier to see but i think it'd be harder to see white and black are hard to see in, in something like this so yeah so actually earlier while we were walking down that path it was kind of crazy how we drove Past and you're like, well, I think this one's number 11. And we started walking down it. It turned out to be 12. Yeah, that was unusual that we ended up on the trail that we were looking for. And I kept looking and on GPS we and on the maps. And I yeah. kept finding trail 15, trail 1, you know, every other trail. And I'm like, where the heck is this trail? And actually, we stopped there just because there was this little road. That, yeah. I we mean, thought we were, we thought we were going to get lost. And we stopped. And I'm like, and then we actually started turning around, didn't we? Yeah, it was overgrown until we hit that orange gate, and then that looked like an official trail. Yeah. And, I mean, honestly, I thought we passed it, but the good thing is we ended up at the right spot, 
and when we got there we heard some rock clacks some possible wood knocks and we found a little bone in the trail which to most people wouldn't be anything but when I had the Sasquatch activity I mean hardcore activity yeah. and I physically saw them I would get little gifts and they put them in the middle of the trails they'll block off trails they put things where people would see where them. you're gonna obviously yeah see I mean them. maybe it's like a and like the, a shock the, value the strange thing is this bone was sitting there by itself I mean, mm -hmm. there was not another bone anywhere near. Yeah. Very odd. Basically, I mean, my theory behind that is they're watching from a distance. At least yeah. one of them is. And they want to see a reaction. Most people just walk by the stuff. Yeah. But to them, maybe it means something if people actually realize stop. it. Yeah, stop and look, the, look at the activity and yeah. acknowledge it. Yeah. To them, that says, oh, you know, they know that we're around yeah but if everybody just walks past it you know coast is clear so so actually who knows i mean maybe they didn't see us pick it up you no. know you never know but they could smell us here may, yeah maybe when they come back tonight they'll be like oh it's gone mm -hmm. and i'm sure they have a, a sense of smell that's way beyond ours yeah they could probably pick up on that and actually follow us back to here if they mm -hmm. wanted I mean, I, think. I, I have a theory that they can sense vibration in the pads of their feet, and scientists have discussed that T. Rexes could do that. Really, you know, they I could, didn't they know could that. They could hear other dinosaurs fighting or walking, yeah. or if one's you know stressed out when they when they walk, they can hear that for miles. They said, really? and you know, go go see what's going on. So I feel that's kind of what's going on with the Sasquatch because when you walk out in the woods, there's nothing there. Yeah, you know, everything's gone, but. And, you know, that includes when you're getting activity, you know, Dang. the rock clacking or wood knocking. And it, if it happens right there, you walk, you know, maybe 80 yards into the woods, further than what your eye can see, yeah. but you can hear it right there. Yeah. And there's just nothing there. Yeah. Well, today, I mean, we, we heard it um, beyond, beyond the bone. Mm -hmm. We heard it at the, was it at the point where we saw all the logs blocking the roads and we took another trail? And that was extremely strange as well because we were going down the trail and then all the, we did we do whoops or we did whoops you did yeah you did a call as well and, yeah I think it was right after that and then all of a sudden you heard a whoop and I didn't hear it and then one came from this way or not a whoop it was a wood knock I'm sorry and then one came from this way and I heard that one. Mm -hmm. And then that's why you, you were like this. And then we, I heard another one. You said you heard another one. And I, I think there, I don't know if the third one was there or if that was a, the rock clacking. Oh, there was definitely a about. rock clacking. And then all of a sudden, you know, he, he mentioned, is there a highway nearby? And I said, no. And a helicopter yeah. came into the area yeah. and it was just running circles around these fields. Yeah. And apparently they're looking for elk, but... It, it just seems strange because Very when they strange. when they flew around us everything stopped it did well it, it did yeah all the action we had the clacks yeah. the knocks, it was getting active stopped. and then once they came in the area it, but what i was going to mention before that is this air, whole area has been eerily and we mentioned it earlier it's been eerily quiet all day of uh, all other wildlife I haven't seen a squirrel or even a bird. No. I think I seen one bird. I saw one bird over here. Yeah, that blue one. Yeah, yeah, that that was it. Yeah. which is unusual. Because I, 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 oh, and I saw one hawk flying around today. But other true. than that, yeah, I saw that same hawk. I haven't seen anything. A crow. We heard some crows. Mm -hmm. What was that? Did you that, hear that? Yeah, that log <laughs> rolled into the oh. water. Oh, oh, all right. But basically. Let's see, we we found a structure on the way back, and... Well, we found one on the way in that was pretty impressive, too. You yeah. saw that Well, one. yeah, that tree leaned up on that other yeah, one. Yeah, that didn't, that looked totally, totally out of the, out of its place. I mean... Because, I mean, very skinny tree, maybe, I don't know, about that big around? Mm -hmm. And then another tree, and just perfect, just perfect. Mm -hmm. Like that, it just—I don't know—it doesn't seem plausible. But yeah. and then and then we saw the other one mm -hmm. later that once again you spotted. I'm batting batting zero today. You're getting a thousand. <laughs> but yeah. there's it not, was there's not 
very much structure out here. No, there's really not. Everything looks as it should. <laughs> you know, I wonder if that has a lot to do with the four, uh, 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 park rangers. Uh, I wonder if they... Well, I mean, I think it has to do with the land management yeah. that they have going on here with the elk and the whitetail. Yeah. And basically what they do is they leave the trees, like the oaks, the hickory, the walnut trees, anything of value, and the pine trees. But basically, they're cutting down any structures. Yeah, I mean, well, that's the what woods I mean. are really, really opened they're... up. They're doing a lot of controlled burns here. Yeah. A lot of controlled burns in the area. And, yeah, I'm just not finding any crazy structures. I, 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 well, I think that has a lot to do with them. Like you said, coming in, they're just cleaning up. I don't necessarily know that it's to cover up Bigfoot structures. I think they're just doing it as part of their job. Because I'd notice that too. There's really not a lot around here that I've seen that we've seen in other places. A couple of things we've seen is very impressive, but just not a lot of stuff. No. Doesn't mean they're not around. No, I know that. You can tell there's a lot of human activity out here. Okay, there's not a lot of humans out here, but there's a lot of human activity in the forest as well, yeah. far as like logging and yeah. I don't know, changing of the forest. So they're definitely around, but. I'm, I'm pretty who sure knows. I heard a wood knock earlier. Yeah. And, and the only thing that was near us was a helicopter, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. But basically, it's going to get a lot colder tonight, and my goal is to cook some food. Yep. Make some racket, maybe play some music. I got my sure. acoustic guitar. All right. And, I don't know, we got gear, just like the audio recorder. We got the infrared <clears> on the <throat> Panasonic camcorder. And basically, if something goes down, we should be able to pick something up. I mean, as far as seeing it... I'm not there yet. I need yeah. I need better gear, and I'm working on that. Yeah. But well, like I said, I'm gonna work with what I got. Get get some Sasquatch theory gear, and that way we can film some better stuff. Or he can. I'm gonna yeah. be sitting here in the dummy seat watching. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you getting that that hoodie though. Oh, I love it. Oh yeah, I got some bacon wrapped around this steak. I got a brat there, and Patrick's got his little his little yeah, steak over here. Yeah, I didn't do as good a job as you did. I like that hoodie you got on. Yeah, I know it's pretty sweet, isn't it? I better not get any grease on it. Sam Squatch hoodie. Sam Squatch. You know everybody loves Sam Squatch. Yeah. How's the how's the steak though? You hear the cows? No, I said, how's the steak? Oh, it's really good. Really good? Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Got a little crispy on the one side, but it's done perfect in the middle. About medium rare, the way I like it. So what time do you think they really get ramped up? Now. Now? Yeah. Why? I'm just curious. I, I would think... They get really ramped up late at night, really late, where they know they don't have to worry about it. Yeah, they could be. But now's a good time. Right there, like a lot of it. So we went to Trail 12. The BFRO did a investigation on a story out there where a deer hunter saw one walk across a field. So we went down to Trail 12 today. And we're walking down it, and right where Trail 13 intersects into Trail 12, we find a bone. Right after that, we hear, well, he heard the first one. He heard a wood knock. And then, guess what? A helicopter. We're out in the middle of nowhere, Maria. A helicopter freaking shows up and starts circling us. Now, I'm dead serious circled over the top of us, circled down in the valley, came around, pulled around, circled back, like went over to the top of where my truck's parked, and then disappeared. <laughs> There's a song I wrote not the other day, or like a couple months ago, but I remember it. Really?
Those are the chords though. Yeah. I can't remember pretty how. Pretty good. What the hell is that on the end of your guitar? Oh, a tuner. What is it? A tuner. Really? Yeah. Like I said, you find me. Good song. Yeah, that's cool. Alright, draw some Sasquatch in, dude. I mean, what, what was hey, the Sasquatch like? You know like? what? Okay. You know, a song. And I brought. So the night was quiet for the most part and I am hoping to intersect the Bigfoot by camping in a remote area like this from time to time. I did hear a strange sound coming from the killing field when Patrick was on the phone but it was nothing worth chasing as I could not identify the sounds I was hearing. Early the next morning I meet up with David and he explains to me some of the strange things that have been taking place on the farm. He has been once again finding large amounts of deer skeletons out in the killing fields. Now he's never gone from these fields other than when he is sleeping. So for there to be multiple kills that are picked clean in one night is very unusual, especially since it is a repetitive thing here on the farm. So David found some, some more deer out there, but he found the skull with the head cap missing. We're not sure if someone cut it or or what. But he said it's a doe, not a buck, so it'd be unusual for somebody to cut that out. This thing. I don't know. It wasn't there one day, and the next day it was there with the head knocked off. So it just showed up? Yep. Let me see. It's a, it's a younger doe, isn't it? Yeah. And I was looking for uh, teeth marks or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, but that skull was here, the one with the cap? Yeah, it was. Under. If not way off. Way over there yeah. where we found them before. Yeah. Yeah. And it was cut open like it was. Uh... Oh wow, there's deer coming down the down the trail. But what if we um, I don't know. What if we found some roadkill or something, or found a deer out here and set up a camera on it one day to figure out what's what's getting it because you recorded or your son did maybe um those eagles fighting that hawk and eagle fighting that was pretty cool I did that. yeah so i feel like maybe we could he figure it out on yeah come here babies come here they're up there by that log they're not coming what's that I said they're thinking I'm going to pour something out for them because the cows took it away from them a while ago. Yeah. This one's still got its head. Still has the head? Yeah. Okay. See, and it's just across from the other one. Yeah.
Okay, that hadn't been moved. Uh -uh. This one is a little bit older doe, isn't it? An older deer. No, I really think that's a young one too. Yeah, that is a young one. The yeah, look. Rib cage. Yeah, the rib cage is a little. It does it one night and it eats every bit of it. The whole thing? Yep. Just so it's like, like that. It's like it's looky here where it sucked the bone marrow out of the spine. Oh yeah. That is that's odd. Ben you've been handling it like you have. You can throw it over here in the brush now. I've been saving it, leaving it where it was at. For you to see. You left that here for me? Yeah. I appreciate it. And this other one too. And cool. Another one to show you. Okay. Right up in there. Definitely feel like you're being watched when you mess with something like that. Okay. Yeah, let's let's go check out some more stuff. I mean, it it would be yeah yeah it would be a really good diet for the deer. So I mean, I could see them killing something and coming down into these fields and feeding on them at night time anyways. Yeah. I picked up all the rocks yesterday. I didn't find any this morning. But I ain't been everywhere this morning. Oh shoot, it is deer hair. So something was eaten. This is where I was hearing the sounds from last night. It, it was, was like, woo -woo, like that. And I kept hearing it, but it was just... Well, it's around here somewhere, the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah, something got, something got snagged up. There's the birds. Huh? The birds are out today. Turkey? Oh, just oh, the, the birds. birds. Yeah, there wasn't anything out yesterday. Oh. They weren't singing or nothing. Here's a piece of metal. I think from a tractor, the blue one. Yeah. So every deer is like the same. I don't know. It's the same process. Their heads missing and. No, not every one of them. Some of them got their heads left on them, but right now, every bit of the meat's gone. Okay. You know, they're not they're not just killing it and throwing it down. They're eating the whole thing. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's big. That one there had its head knocked off too. Really? It's like something chewed on this one's face. Or the skull. Wow, that one's like bleached white. I mean, is that typical when you find no a, like the skeleton? Does the head typically stay attached to the the neck frame? No, the neck bone? I have some of them that if their neck is broke, uh -huh. if I find them, uh, the very first deer that got me thinking was one that had its head knocked off. Uh -huh. But. Some of them just breaks their neck, and some of them slaps them plumb off. Yeah. But there's no like bite marks on the head. Mm -mm. That's the weird part. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's bones all over this, the, the killing fields. Me and Linda come out here yesterday, driving all over this, these fields looking for deer sheds. Uh-huh. And that hair wasn't out there then. Yeah. Well, this place definitely lives up to its name, the killing fields. Yeah, it does. No matter what it is that's doing it. David brought me to the spot where spring water pours out of the ground and they have some type of little concrete shelter here. Hey, you can see the water super clear. I bet it's ice cold. Oh yeah. But yeah, this looks like it was built a long time ago. There's clear spring water in there. Yeah, that's interesting. Whoa, something was right there. Oh yeah, there's a frog in there. Freak me out. Well, a Sasquatch could fit his head in there. Definitely get a drink. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I don't know. Yeah, very cool. <clears throat> oh, wow. Definitely a good place to get fresh water. Very cool. People camp in it. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, them people camp in there. Yeah. Oh wow. Go check it out. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Neat little cabin. How old do you think it is? Uh, that's black there. It's just tail. Oh, okay. Missouri's wildfire suppression began here. 19, 1926. Last a long time. Yeah. Well, now I know where I'm camping at next time. No windows. Yeah, that's neat. <clears throat> Be a good spot to hang out at. Sasquatch habitat. 
There we go. Stuff that's not cut. Really? Oh, okay. They don't stop for sand much. No, they don't stop. They like private. Property. Oh, yeah. Some ducks out there. I had a duck on my pond this morning. Yeah. Oh yeah. Geese, ducks. That's pretty neat. Is there a lot of bass in here? Supposed to be. Yeah. Well, this would be a good spot. Yeah, this would be a good spot to camp because you can get your food straight out of here. I believe I'd bring me some beanie weenies. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah, you might have to. I, me and Linda's come over. Bank. Mm -hmm. We haven't had very good luck lately. Yeah. Do you think there's been too many people fishing out of it, or? Yeah. I I don't know what the deal is. They they used to stock it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they still do or not, but. Yeah. I see another picnic table over there. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that. There's a trail that goes to the fire tower. Uh -huh. Out through there. Walk across the dam and up through there. Can you actually get into the fire tower? Yeah, no, you can't get into it. You can climb the tower. I've heard a lot of people like turning those fire towers into like homes. Yeah. Be pretty cool. Be the best view in the in the park. Well you get a view. Yeah. Might not like it. During a wind windstorm. Oh yeah. I think about the snow would have to get really deep to. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you.